I was told many times that I'd never make it in radio or, or television, that it wasn't my time, that perhaps I had too heavy an accent, or perhaps, you know, I was too dark skinned. They judged me by the color of my skin and the accent in my voice. My dad was a janitor and my mom used to clean houses on the rich part of San Antonio. We lived on the west side in the barrio. I used to shine shoes on Guadalupe Street. When I went to school, I didn't speak a word of English. It was tough. When I was 13, my dad was laid off from work. And we did what a lot of Latino families in South Texas had to do back then. We became migrant farm workers. And my father, Bruno, saying, Juanito, you want to do this kind of work for the rest of your life? Or do you want to get a college education someday? It was a no-brainer, <laughs> but no one did believed in me. But thank God for my mother Maria. She was the one who kept pushing, pushing and inspiring and motivating me. She would say, mijo, that doesn't matter. What matters is what's in here, in your brain, and what's in here, in your corazón. There were very few people who were Latino on television. So I wanted to be a pioneer. I wanted to be the one who broke through because I knew that we had stories to tell and that they would prove enlightening. I wanted to get into television and no one would hire me. I applied to 81 stations and it, it was tough. And I know that some of that was the fact that everyone had their one Hispanic reporter and maybe they thought that was enough. Now, now I look around and we have a good number of Latinos, uh, uh, especially at ABC. Now I'm considered the veteran, you know, senior correspondent. I tell them I'm the senior correspondent. <laughs> it's been a, an incredible journey uh, and working for the great anchors, Barbara Walters and Peter Jennings and Diane Sawyer and Ted Koppel was such, such an honor and I learned so much. And we have to talk about it. What would you do? So the question is, what would you do? I love it because it shines a light on issues that people ignore in this country or they say it's not really happening. With our hidden cameras, we are able to show you that yes, it inspires us. It reminds you that there's a lot of goodness out there. It restores your faith in humanity. It reminds us that we've made a lot of progress in dealing with a lot of these issues. But it also reminds us that despite all that progress, there's still a lot of work to be done in this country when it comes to accepting people who are different from us. I just want to be remembered as the guy who told stories that uh, needed to be told, who was brave enough to go into places where perhaps other people didn't want to look, you know, to shine a light on the darkest corners of the world where they were being ignored by other journalists, that I was determined enough to bring it into the light, whatever it is. If, if I'm remembered as a role model at all, it would be that you know I inspired others to do the same thing, and that I sort of cut the path with my machete, right? So that the person behind me could have it perhaps a little bit easier.